Hello, my fellow YouTubers and subscribers, and welcome to my latest podcast. Today, I talk about the latest, I guess you could say sports movie, sports drama, Challengers. Directed by Luca Guadagnino. Guadagnino, I hope I've said that correctly. The movie stars Zendaya, Mike Faced, and Josh O'Connor. Now, obviously, Zendaya is hugely famous, having been in the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies and Dune Part 2, which came out earlier this year. And Mike Faced was known for West Side Story with Steven Spielberg. And as for Josh O'Connor, I've not really seen any of his work other than this, so it was nice to see a fresh face. This movie, basically, <laughs> it's not what you think it is. It's not just a movie about tennis. It's a movie about three people who, I guess you could say, are very toxic for each other. So, the plot of Challengers is as follows. Tashi, a former tennis prodigy turned coach, turns her husband into a champion. But to overcome a losing streak, he needs to face his ex-best friend and Tashi's ex-boyfriend. So on surface level, that sounds quite plain. But I would say it's anything but plain. Challengers, it's a movie that I was curious about. I wasn't super, super hyped to see it. But I was intrigued because the trailers had me intrigued. And I'd never seen Luca Guadagnino's films, at least not to my knowledge anyway. And it's not often you get a movie about tennis. <laughs> you know, I don't see many films about tennis. So I was, cu as I was curious to see how the tennis sequences were going to look on film. In short, I think the film is getting fairly positive reviews, at least as far as the general consensus is concerned. My good friend and subscriber Harry Thomas is a devout fan of this movie. I have to be honest and say, well, I liked this movie. I didn't love it. I thought it was good. I thought it was a very solid movie. And it was a great drama between the three leads. But I didn't think it was anything groundbreaking. The story wasn't a masterpiece. I don't know if it was trying to be a masterpiece. But I don't think it was. And it was a very interesting film in terms of the drama. How these three people interacted. And how, as I said, they, they, they are quite toxic for one another. And how they all interact. And essentially how Zendaya's character is pulling the strings on both of them. Because she knows that the two of them fancy her. And she uses her sexuality and her competitive drive to use them. And they basically allow themselves to be used by her in terms of, you know, one, to, to win the tennis, but two, to win her affections. So I would describe the movie as very much a love triangle of sorts with the two guys competing for her. But very much that is the theme of the movie. Competition. Competitiveness. Competitive drive. Because Zendaya's character isn't portrayed to be angelic, and I like that. I like that she's got different sides. She's very competitive. When she's competitive, she often makes very impulsive decisions, especially towards the end of the movie, when effectively she becomes quite unfaithful to her husband. And I thought the performances were really, really good, especially the, th the three of them are, are terrific together. They have a lot of great chemistry. Zendaya is obviously a delight. She does kind of do that typical thing where when her characters get angry, she does swear a bit more. She does get a bit more spunky. Um, so there were, there were elements of similarity to her performance compared to other roles she's played, but I still thought she was really good, and the character was definitely complicated, because once the character has her injury, that definitely changes a lot for her, and she never lost that competitive drive, so she has to find something to latch onto in order to continue that drive. The two guys are absolutely fantastic. Mike Faced is, uh, it, it, he is a terrific actor. He was great in West Side Story as Riff, and I really liked him here. How, really, his character goes on a real mental journey, and I guess comes of age, really. He he begins to see Tashi as this kind of goddess, who is, well, one, hot, and two, able to get him closer to what he wants, which is to win tennis. But maybe as the film goes on, he might change his mind about tennis. Maybe he sees that striving for something for so long has really grinded him to a halt. So he really is a different person uh, in the present day events of the movie. And the thing about this film is that it is told in non-linear. So you do have to keep up. <laughs> you do have to pay attention to the timeline. Sometimes the timeline zips back and forth very quickly. They do have text graphics to help you explain. But if you're not paying attention, you will probably be confused. And Josh O'Connor as Patrick was also very good. I, th I thought he was, um, he, was, he was very good and he was certainly... A little bit, how can I put it, less reckless than um, Art was. 
but the dynamic that he had with him was was brilliant and it was great to see that evolve especially when tashi both comes into their lives and how their relationship is affected as as per i i would say the movie suffers a bit from pacing the film is quite long i think it's like two hours 11 minutes it, it does feel a bit baggy in the middle as we're constantly jumping back and forth between timelines which is good i mean that's a great way to tell the story especially as it kind of adds to the tension of that final tennis game which actually it starts at the beginning of the movie and throughout the movie we're intercutting between timelines which is which is the best way to do it but i did just feel maybe one or two scenes did go on a little bit too long i did get a little bit restless at one point but the tennis sequences are amazing the the way that they're done um you feel the tension and the way the camera moves so erratically and there's even one shot from the point of view of the ball where you are the ball being whacked around which is kind of cool Parts of the editing work, parts of the editing don't, in my opinion. Some of the sequences I did find a bit hard to follow, but most of them were fine, most of them were engaging. And I've never seen tennis portrayed in a film like this before. It is interesting. The thing is, like, the movie, I wouldn't say it's a tennis movie. Tennis is just the device in the narrative that connects these three people. And that, in a, in a way, the tennis is a metaphor for their their relationships, that the three of them keep going back and forth, hitting each other like a racket because of their toxicity. So there really is great metaphor and great drama in this story. If you if you look in if you choose to see the deeper context of the movie as that, then I think it could create a very interesting narrative. Because uh, if you don't see the deeper meaning of that, then on surface of it, it might just look like a romantic comedy. Well, not comedy, ro romantic drama as such. But it was a great three hander, and I and I really thought. It was it was interesting to explore the dynamic between these three, and there's definitely some sexual um, scenes in this film. The sex isn't done too extravagantly. It's not like Game of Thrones or anything. It's it's not like poor things. It's not gratuitous, but the sex is moderate. And there's even a scene where the three of them are in that hotel, and she kisses both of them, and and they have. It's not really like a three way kiss, but she's kind of kissing both of them, and I know that some people assumed that from the trailer, it was going to, it looked as though there was going to be a three-way, like a threesome, but it's not really that, it's very tame, and it's very sensitively done, and there's, the closest we get to a sex scene is Zendaya in her underpants and bra uh, with Patrick, but that's kind of it really, there's there's not there's not much else, it's more kissing and, and intimate stuff, so the intimacy was well coordinated, I thought, and I think the direction is solid, and it is a very solid piece of drama, I'd say I was quite surprised. But like I said, I, I just don't think it's perfect. And I also think that Tashi's character, I, I did find her, I'm not going to lie, I found her slightly unlikable in places because she does become very manipulative, I guess which is the point of the story, to prove that um, all these people will do just about anything to get what they want in terms of the comp competitive theme. Uh, especially in the third act, Tashi kind of goes too far, really, I think. And it's at the point where her marriage is already kind of broken, so it makes no difference to art, but in terms of just her morally, where she's still on that, I just felt like the character really lacked any kind of morals because she was almost a bit selfish, vain, in regards to, you know, she still is doing her best and trying desperately, cl clutching her straws to win, despite what's happening. I have to say, though, the weakest part of the film is the ending. Not, not because of what happens, but the way it's edited. The editing of that final tennis game is very, very intense, but then it just ends so abruptly. It just cuts off. It just ends. I won't say what actually happens if you want to see the movie. I like the resolution for the three characters in terms of their their relationship, but the way it's edited is so quick. It's like, oh, and we're done. Right, so all that build-up to just have it cut off like that was really odd. I just found that very bizarre. If you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. It's that final moment in the tennis game in slow motion, and then the the hug moment. That's all I'll say, the hug moment. Uh, it was just so quick. It was like, as soon as that happened, literally two seconds after to react, and then boom, credits. They should have prolonged that moment, really, to sell the emotion. There's, there's not even any kind of epilogue to resolve what happened to the characters after that scene. It just ends. It just It just ends. Which is odd. Very, very odd. But overall, I really liked Challenges. I, th I thought it was good. I don't think it's perfect, but I do think it's a solid time. And if you have got two hours to spare, go and see the movie. You'll get some dramatic performances, a good love triangle, 
um, really interesting tennis sequences. So I think you can't really go wrong in, in certain areas, but just be aware it's not perfect. So my final score for challenges is an 8 out of 10. I really, really enjoyed it. So that's my review. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Stay tuned for more reviews to come in the future. So until next time, see ya.